Hey, right guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my lower ab exercises. Well, actually, my top tips on lower ab exercises, as well as the exercises I actually do to work my lower abs. Now, remember, with um, abs, they are made in the kitchen. So I know that's a bit of a cheesy saying, but I'd have to 100% say they are made in the kitchen. What I mean by that is you need to be in a calorific deficit to be able to get visible abs, all right? If you're eating too much, you're gonna gain body fat. If you gain body fat, you're gonna bring body fat around your arms, legs, and especially around your waist area, all right? So, if you're doing loads and loads of crunches and loads of sit-ups, and the exercise I show you for your lower abs, but you still can't see your lower abs, and you're thinking to yourself, well, hang on a minute, I'm following his exercises, he's giving me a top exercise to do, he's giving me his tips to do, and I still can't see them. The reason you can't see them is because your body fat isn't low enough. So, you need to reduce your calorie intake, be in a calorie deficit, along with high intensity exercise, and these exercises, you will get that nice lower ab definition, all right? Now, to work lower abs, what we need to make sure we're doing the whole time is our body wants to be in a kind of a crunch position. So we want to bring our hips towards our ribcage. That's really going to engage with lower abs. Now, there's other exercises you can do that don't involve that movement, but Mainly, the exercise I'm going to focus on today is really bringing the hips up towards the ribcage and really engaging those lower abs. My muscle connection is so important with this, it's all about really focusing on that area. So, you want to work the lower abs, so you need to visually and mentally think about the abs crunching, really burning down the bottom part, okay? If you don't think about abs, what's going to happen is hip flex is going to take over. So, these muscles here, okay? they're gonna take over, and we don't want these to be active, we want this part here to be active, we wanna get that nice defined torso. So, let's get started straight away. We will go into my exercise number one. I would say, for someone who's a beginner or even an advanced person, this exercise is great to start off with. Now, all you're gonna do is a reverse crunch. So, head could be rested down, or head could be up, it's up to you, depending on your neck pain. If you get neck pain, rest your head down. All you're then gonna do, is bring your knees up towards you, and you're gonna focus on bringing your knees towards your shoulders, and you're gonna crunch with your hips. So, like this. Can you see I lift my hips up off the ground and really engage that crunch? And my aim is to bring the knees towards the shoulders. If I focus on that, I'm gonna really feel it down here the whole time. All right, what we don't want to see is this. That's got no hip movement at all, okay? We need those hips to lift off the ground. We need the knees towards the shoulders to get that crunch and really work on those lower abs, all right? So remember, shoulders back, knees up, and crunch. If you want to bring your legs up further, you can. But the whole idea of working those lower abs is all about that reverse crunch. It's all about bringing the hips towards the rib cage, getting that crunch there. Now, to make this harder, you can bring your legs further down, get that stretch, then come in, back up. Stretch, come in, and back up. All right, that's exercise number one. And I think that's a great exercise to start off with. Now, to advance that, like I said, you can bring your legs further out, or what you can do is put a medicine ball between your legs, or a weight, as long as you don't drop the weight, because it's gonna be painful. So, put that in between your legs, and then you can focus on then doing the crunch and getting some weight behind it, okay? Don't be afraid to shift some weight in your ab exercise as well, because remember that abs are like any other muscle, they only respond to either um, frequency, intensity, so increase intensity, we can either do more repetitions or we can increase the weight, so we can put a weight there, make the exercise harder, all right? Otherwise, it's similar to like biceps, we need to increase the weight to build that muscle, all right? Don't be afraid of block hard abs, that never happens, okay? Increase the weight, make those abs work and visually think about them. All right, exercise number two, very similar to this, but it's a straight leg raise. So, your legs are straight, and all you're gonna do is lift your legs in the air. All right, so that's the first part of the exercise, and this is the leg lift. So we've done the reverse crunch, and now we do the leg raise. Now, that's a great exercise, things to remember, is you don't want to feel it pulling on your lower back. If any time you feel it pulling on your lower back, your core maybe isn't, or your abs maybe aren't strong enough for this exercise. So you may need to just stick with the reverse crunch instead, as long as that feels comfortable for you. If you want to take up a level and go to the leg raise, 
Go to the leg raise, just make sure that lower back doesn't pull. You can always rest your head back, so if your neck aches, head back and rest there, okay? Now, to advance that, and what I really like, what really engages the lower abs, is shoulders back, head back if you need to, leg raise, and then a hip lift, okay? So, we're going back down again. Can you notice how my heels are on top of the floor? They're back up with a hip lift, and back down. Alright, so what I'm not doing, I'm not slamming my feet on the floor all the time. If I slam my feet on the floor, what's going to happen is, I'm going to lose tension on my lower abs. It's no different to arguments say doing a bench press and resting on your chest every time. We need to keep the abs engaged, we need to keep working them. So what we need to do, bring the legs down, just before it touches the ground, back up. Legs down, just before it touches the ground, back up. So we've done the reverse crunch. We've done the leg raises, okay? We've done the leg raises with a hip lift, which is an advancement. And remember, the hip lift is really engaging those lower abs. Now, what we're going to go on to is a V-sit. Those modifications of a V-sit, I'll take you through the modifications. Right, we've got hands behind us. And all we're going to do is like a scissor motion. The legs go up straight. And then what we then do is crunch in. So, that would be the beginner version. Hands behind us, keep our back supported, making sure we don't feel any strength for the lower back, making sure the hip flexors aren't overactive, we're focusing purely on the lower abs. If you'd like to advance that exercise, which I recommend you always push yourself, you can take hands away from you, and that makes the exercise a lot harder. So what we do, hands away from us, and we go back down, and then we come up. Remember, if we want to work the lower abs, we need to mentally think about the lower abs. Now, that's version number two of the V-set. If you want to take it to another level harder, we can do version three of the V-set, which is actually where we incorporate the upper arms and we keep the legs straight in the air, so it's like a leg raise in, and a V-set, okay? So what I mean is, we have the legs straight, the arms reached out, and all we do is we lift the legs up and the upper body comes up. Now, I know in that exercise we are working the top half of the abs as well, but there's no reason why we want to target, well, we do want to target specific areas, but there's no reason why we can't work the top and the bottom at the same time. Remember, if we're doing that VC and we're coming up, we're crunching both parts, which means we're working the top and the bottom. Remember, the abs are a unit, so you're going to be working them together anyway, all right? If you want those abs we talked about, and you want the six pack, or you want the flat stomach, you want the tone defined abs, you will only get that through big body weight movements like your squats, your lunges, your bench press, your burpees, your deadlifts, those kind of things. High intensity training, so making sure you're doing some form of aerobic exercise, albeit sprints. It can be, for example, um, period of time on the assault bike, the row machine, that kind of really pushing yourself, or just being more active every single day alongside a calorific deficit, you will get the abs you want, all right? So, we've got a reverse crunch, Yep, tick. We've gone over the leg raises. We've gone over the leg raising hip lift, okay? So there's three exercises there for you. Then we've gone to the V-sit. We've gone to the V-sit with different variations. We've gone to the V-sit hands behind us, V-sit with the hands off, and then we've gone into the straight leg and um, the straight arm V-sit. What we're now going to cover is we're going to cover the flat kicks and also scissor kicks, all right? So, flat kicks, we're lying on our back. And I'm going to do toes up, I'm going to up and down. Can you see how my legs are straight, okay? There's no bend in the knees at all. The legs are completely straight. I'm going up and down. The stomach is sucked in the whole time. And I'm really focusing on working with the lower abs, holding the core in nice and tight. Now, from front of kicks, we go scissors, or we go out and in, like so, all right? So remember, you can play around the variation of what you work, 
but you're really trying to keep that stomach sucked in. So you're trying to prevent the lower back from arching off the floor the whole time. So you're trying to keep that lower back pinned down, stomach in nice and tight, and you're going over and under, like so. That's really going to engage the abs, okay? It's going to give you a great workout. Now, last exercise we're going for is similar to mountain climber, so we get in a mountain climber position, like so. And all we're then going to do is basically bring the knee in towards the chest. They're called sprint starts. So nice and slow, crunch in, back out, crunch in, back out, crunch in, and like so. Alright, can you see how I'm doing? I'm not actually speeding the exercise up as such and trying to go super fast with the exercise. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to slow it down. I'm trying to bring the knee in towards and really crunch in with those lower abs. Now, they are my five exercises, all right? So we hit the reverse crunch, and we're going to do 10 reps of each exercise, all right? So we're going to do 10 reps of reverse crunch, we're going to do 10 reps of leg raise, we're going to do 10 reps of V sit, we're then going to do 10 reps of flutter kicks, do what, um, 10 of each leg, we're then going to do 10 legs of the slow mountain climber, make sure we get a good crunch and engagement the whole time, all right? See how we get on with those. Remember, if you get any lower back pain, you get any neck pain, rest your head on the mat the whole time, or you can rest a pillow underneath it. With your lower back, you've got to suck your stomach in, you've got to engage your core, you've got to focus on working the abs. You're not working the lower back. There's exercises that suit certain people, so if you feel that um, there's leg raise is too much for you, stick with the reverse crunch, work on the reverse crunch, get better at doing the reverse crunch, add the weight in the advancement like we said. Once you've got that, you can then progress onto the leg raise. All right? But don't just only do the leg raise because you feel like you have to.